Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 368. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 358 to 369. Hey, in Trick 368, we want to count unique numbers in this column given a certain condition in this column. So our goal here is we have some measurements from certain sites. And we just want to count the unique measurements from the Seattle site. So here you can see we have some duplicates, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So we need to count one for only for those ones. And then these two each are unique, so we'll count those. So we need a count of three. Now back in uh, Magic Trick 362, we saw how to use sum product and frequency. We are going to use the frequency function here, but we won't be able to use sum product. We're going to use sum around it to add the number one for each unique count. So really we want one, two, three. Now, trues, we're going to need to set up some formula that says find all the Seattles and those will be trues. Then we need to come over here and somehow find all of the unique numbers. So we're going to start off with sum and we are going to have some trues and falses so we're going to need to convert those to ones and zeros so I'm going to use double negative and then open parentheses. Now just like in 362 we use the frequency function. The frequency function is great. Uh, when you're dealing with numbers as the thing you want to count. We need some data some data, and some bins. These are the upper limits for each class. So the data for us is ultimately going to be all of these numbers right here, given that there's a condition here. And then the bins will be all of these numbers here. Now the fact that we set up a condition over here, it'll only be counting uh, it won't count anything for this uh, bin entry or this bin entry, etc. Only for these ones. So let's go ahead and do it. We have to create data array uh, given a condition. So we're going to say if this column is equal to Seattle, then what do we want? This one right here. So right there, that little construction has eliminated all the numbers except for this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that'll be, those will be well, let's close parentheses on the value if true. All of this right here will be the data array. And if I hit F9, you can see that we have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.16, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So we've eliminated all those other bits of data. Control Z. Now watch this. The bins, comma, as we saw back in 362, it's very great. You, we usually have increments like 10 to 20, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. But here we're just going to put the individual elements. And because the bins in the frequency function always includes this number, it'll count them. Now think about this. We just highlighted the whole column. But it's never going to touch this because of the data that's um, going in. We've eliminated all of the numbers in the white here. So the fact that we have this bin this bin, this bin, it'll just get a count of zero for that. So now we close parentheses. Now let's look at this uh, frequency right here and hit the F9 key. There we get a three. What is that? Oh, that's because there's one, two, three. So it's counting how many point twos there are. And then we get a one, a one. Now that's not going to work because a three, a one, a one, if you add all that up, it's actually five. And we need a count of three. Control Z. Uh, not only that, the double negative would just make them the same numbers they are, but we'll take this frequency function in that purple parenthesis there and say, tell me if any of those are greater than zero. Is three, one, and one greater than zero? Yes, so those become those become trues, close parentheses. That's that green one right there. That double negative will convert them to ones, close parentheses. The sum will add them. Now, this is an array formula, so we have to hold Control Shift and Enter. And there we go. We have counted. Now, this one was pretty easy. I know it's, it wasn't that easy, but compared to the next one, this one is easy. And we took advantage of the frequency function because we had uh, numbers here. Now, let's scroll over here. Now we have a similar setup here. We have for our voter data, yes, no, whether they voted yes or no, and then the, the name of the person here. Unfortunately, we have some uh, duplicates. And imagine if this was a huge data set. I just have a little data set here. But 
Here's the thing we want to uniquely count. So for two, there's two chin yeses, but we only need one. There's two, there's one Joe, but there's two Sues for yes. So we need a one, a one, and a one there. So we need a total count of three. Now the tricky part here is that these are not numbers. If if they were, we could use the frequency function. The fact that they are uh, words means we're going to have to get a little bit tricky. And actually, what we're going to do is we're going to use the match function. Now I'm going to this form is a little bit tricky, so I'm going to come over here to the side and show you how we'd make this uh, calculation in multiple steps, and then we'll do it all in one formula. First thing we want to do is we want to say equals if. If this equals yes, then I'm going to need to lock that right there with the F4 key. Then we want to do match. Match is the trick here. Since we can't use frequency, we can get match to tell us ordinal position. This would be ordinal position 1, but match only selects ordinal positions for duplicates from the first one, so this will also get a 1. That'll be our signal that there's a duplicate when we get a du um, uh, duplicate match ordinal position number. So I'm going to say, hey, match, look at that value right there, comma, in this whole range, F4 to lock it, comma, we're going to do exact match because we're looking up in an exact uh, word, close parentheses, and we do, that's the value of true. We don't need the false. We'll just have a false in the cell, so I'll close parentheses, control enter. Now I'm going to copy this down. You see, that is the array, or part of our formula. A 1, a 1, that'll tell us a duplicate. There's a 2, that's not a duplicate. But Sue is the 8th in this list, so we'll get an 8 and an 8 there. Now the next thing we need to do is this will be, we'll use the frequency function, but we're going to have to use the match function inside of the frequency function just to get our input values. Now when you're using frequency you need some bins, which means a category to count. So we're actually going to do use the row function because if we say, remember match delivers an ordinal position. We can use uh, the row function to give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. Here's what we're going to do. Equals row of this one. Ma, um, ma, if we copy that down, it'll just give us 12 to 22. That's not going to work, so we have to minus row, and this one has to be locked. F4, close parentheses. Right now, that'll give us 0, right? 12 minus 12, because we're in row 12, is 0, so we're going to add 1. And that's inside of our bigger formula. We'll do that same thing. Those will be our bins. Notice that that right there is a single cell. When we get to our array formula, that'll have to be the whole range. Similarly, with the match, that single value right there in the array formula will have to be the whole range. Now watch this. Now we use the frequency function. And this is an array function, so we have to enter it into all of the cells using Control-Shift-Enter. Frequency, the data array is this right here comma, and the bins for counting is this. Now just think about it. This is a data point, this is a data point, and there's only one bin being counted. So those two would be consolidated into a count of two. Con, uh, close parentheses and then control shift enter. There it is, look at that. So we've gone from our match with, and then we used our rows with our bins. Finally we get a count of two for the ones. Notice how that was a duplicate. We took that duplicate word, converted them to numbers with match, ordinal position, and then with the rows and frequency, got it all into one category. Then we have a 1 there and a 2 there because for the 8. Notice the uh, 2 is right there. And really, Joe, we see her as what, 5 or 6 or whatever that is, but the match sees it as 2. But it doesn't matter. We still got a count of 1 there. Uh, and finally, the two eights. Now, finally, how do we convert these to individual number ones? Because we need a one, two, three. Well, uh, the if function can see any number besides zero as a true. So watch this, equals sum if. And I'm just going to highlight this whole range right here. Let me actually scoot down to make this a little bit more obvious. Zip. Right? So we got that whole logical test. No way we can highlight a bunch of uh, numbers like this. Yes, that particular entry will be true because it's any number besides 0. True, 
true, all the rest are false. Watch this, comma, what is the value if that we see a true one, because we want to count one. We don't need the false, so we close parentheses, and this is an array, or one more close parentheses. This is an array formula, so we hold Control Shift and Enter, three. That is a long way to do it with a lot of cells, and we're going to do that same formula, but in all one formula. You ready? Equals sum. Well, actually, let me just to, to lessen the blow of this big formula here, right? You see that range right there? That's actually the frequency function, but the frequency function used what? Both of those pieces. So inside of the frequency, we're going to have to build whatever we had from this range, and then for the bins, whatever we had from this range. equals SUM, and then if, right now, if we put a comma to get rid of the logical test, the value, if true, is just going to be that one. So it's really, the frequency function is going to deliver a, a bunch of zeros and numbers to the logical test. Here we go, frequency. And the data array is going to be if this whole range is equal to yes. Remember? Uh, if that's true, what do we want? We want a match. So we do match. And instead of using a single cell and a lookup, we're going to use the whole range, comma, the whole lookup range here, lookup array, comma, and then the match type is zero. Okay, so we have a, a test and then the actual number going in, which is going to give us all of these numbers here, the 8, the 8, the 2, etc. We can close parentheses because we do not need the false, and that is what delivers the data array. Now watch this. If I highlight just the frequency part and hit F9, what is it? The um, No, just the if part right there and hit F9. It gives us exactly what we had from this first column, 1, 1, 2, 8, 8, 8, control Z. Now, the bins, comma, we're going to do our rows, rows. And instead of a single cell, we do the whole range. It's not rows, it's row. Rows would not work there. It's row, individual row, because we want uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. Minus row, and this one we need to lock, that one right there, F4. And remember, as we saw before, 12 minus 12 is 0, so we added 1. Those are the bins. That is so cool. Now, the frequency right here. Now, if I highlight the whole frequency, we'll see that we get this column here of 2, 1, 0, etc. So if I hit F9, you can see we have, in essence, there's the logical test. Some trues, a bunch of falses, a true, and a bunch of falses. Control Z come to the end, comma, and what's the value if true? It's a 1. Close parentheses because we do not need that false. Close parentheses on the sum and control shift enter. There we have it. Now if we were to change this to s, we'd get a 4. Chin. Oh no, um, yeah. Uh, now I forget what that, oh, control Z, luckily there's control Z. So we have there, if we change this one, uh, another one to Sue, right? So there's three Sues. Now we'd have two. Now, if you had some blanks or you had odd wildcard characters, you could use this formula right here. All we had to do was add an extra thing, an extra condition. So there's two ifs for the uh, please only give me not blank, and then that's for wild cards, and that's for in case there's divide by zero. But there it is, um, counting unique items when there is a criteria in a second column. We saw how to do it for words, which was a little bit more complicated than how we did it for numbers. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.